Welcome back to This Side of the Radio. My name is Shane. This is part two of the Artemis Antenna Kit build from the guys over Coffee and Ham Radios. If you haven't seen part one, I'll put a link to it up here. If you have, then let's get out into the field, trim this element, and get ready to put this antenna on the air. We'll see you in the field. Welcome back, guys. We're over here to my favorite park across the street. Sorry if there's some wind noise, and sorry if there is some highway noise, but it's Texas, and when we got a good day, it's a beautiful day outside. When we get a beautiful day to go play with the radio or play antennas, we're going to take advantage of it. So I apologize if there's some wind noise in here. Got everything set up. We're going to tune the Artemis antenna. Now, in fade half wave, uh, this one's going to be set up as uh, a 40 through 10. So I want to make the antenna resonant on the middle of the general portion here in the United States of the 40 meter band. So uh, 7.235 is pretty close to the center of the general portion for the, the phone stuff. So if we do some math, uh, 456 divided by 7.235, that gives us roughly 63 feet. So we're gonna need a 63 foot element in order to be resonant at 7.235. And with uh, this antenna being as broad banded as it is, it should cover pretty much the entire uh, phone portion of the band and then some. But uh, I'll run through uh, the setup here, what I've got, uh, uh, how I've got it laid out, and then uh, we'll make the cut. I've got an antenna analyzer here. Uh, you can see I've got the uh, spider beam uh, antenna mast. We'll put the mast uh, up, put the antenna on it. Uh, I'm using the uh, electrical stake that I use for the Buddy Stick Pro, and because we'll, we want to keep that. Uh, uh, the Artemis about a foot off the ground. Uh, I'm not going to use a counterpoise. I usually don't use a counterpoise, but um, it definitely wouldn't hurt if you decide to use one. That's uh, your personal preference. But uh, give me one second. I'll finish getting set up and I'll give you guys a, a kind of a tour of what we got. So here's here's how I've got it laid out. I've got a tent stake here uh, holding the um, uh, tape measure in place. I've got the Artemis laid up against it to where uh, I can pull some tension and make sure that we get that nice and tight. So let's go down to the end. Man, 65 feet was way more than I imagined. All right, so there's our 65 foot mark right there. So I'm gonna make it, I'm gonna cut that. And then I'm gonna set up the spider beam mast and we'll get some S-clips to hold the wire up. We're gonna use the rig, uh, rig analyzer, the Stick 230, with the Antscope software on my iPad mini. So uh, let's get the, the element cut. We'll get the uh, antenna set up, like, we were gonna, like if we were gonna use it at a Parks on the Air or you know, you know, however, how we're gonna use it, that's kinda how you wanna, you wanna trim this thing. But let's get everything uh, put together, get it on the analyzer, and let's see what we got. Let's see if the math is uh, is there for us? So I cut it a little bit long because I'm I'm all I'm always afraid I'm going to cut too short. So it's a little bit long, so I'm probably going to have to trim a little bit off of it. But let's see how close we are. So I've got it set up and tuned. It's a little bit high off the ground. I was moving it around to a couple different uh, places to see if it made a difference in the SWR. And uh, I just got the uh, spider beam leaned up into that tree and the and the wires up. It's kind of set up as a sloper and. Uh, Feed lines running back here, no counterpoise, and uh, I was running the uh, Rig Expert Stick 230 on this. Now, I was only able to get it tuned down to 1.2 to 1 SWR initially, and not let me turn out of the wind here. Sorry about that. And uh, so I started moving the antenna around, and the location of the antenna actually made a pretty significant difference in the uh, in the SWR. So. I, I took some screenshots of the SWR reading that came out of the uh, Antscope software and uh, it's kind of getting rush hour traffic now so we're going to head back inside and uh, we'll, we'll take a look at the, at the curves that, uh, that came out of the center. All in all, uh, really, uh, ex really impressed with the antenna. Uh, let me show you, I ended up trimming, I only ended up trimming about, I made two cuts, the first cut first cut was about a foot and the second cut was about six eight inches and uh, that got us exactly where we needed to be so I'm gonna pack up here we'll go back inside and uh, get on the computer and I'll pull the screenshots up and uh, I'll show you what uh, kind of SWR we've got across the bands that, uh, that we cut this far see you in just a second
Welcome back, guys. Man, it was a bit of a hot one out there today. It was about uh, 92 degrees, and um, the sun was baking down, and it wasn't quite ready for summertime, but we got it done. So let's take a look at the, the SWR curves that we came up with uh, first. So this is the 40 meter band, and you can see we were shooting for 7.235, which is in the middle of the phone portion um, of the 40 meter band for generals uh, here in the United States. And we were getting 1.219, 1.21 or 1.2 if you want to call it that. And if you look at the line there, it goes from about one, it starts at a, coming down about uh, 1.4 at just about 7.1, maybe 7.150. And it stays under 1.4 all the way outside of the band. So we know we can cover the entire 40 meter band at a less than 1.4 to 1 SWR. So I'm really excited about that because the seven, uh, the 40 meter band for for general starts at seven dot uh, stops at seven dot three zero. So we're going to be way under 1.4 to one for the entire 40 meter band. So let's take a look now. Let's move on to 20 meters, and 20 meters for generals in the United States is going to be between 14 to 25 and 14 350. So from 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 this chart it starts at uh, 250 but if you go all the way back to 14 225 which is on the left side of the chart here we're under two to one all the way all the way through the entire band so uh it's resonant at 14.287 which i think is about the middle there um the middle of the band which is at, at 1.7 to 1 swr which i'm completely fine with um, i've got something i'm going to show you towards the end here that i think made a significant difference in uh the SWR on 40 that I think would probably make a significant difference on the other bands. So we, the other band that it's resonant on would be uh, 15 meters, which is 21 megahertz. And from 21, uh, 275 for generals in the United States, 40, 21.275 all the way up to 27.450. So from 21, uh, looks like about 280. We're just above two to one. And then it uh, comes down the higher we go in the band and uh, 450 would be the top of that so 450 is going to be right right about here so we're about t under two to one between 21.4 and uh, 21450. but again i think this is going to be this this would have been lower um when you see what i've done next so uh i was kind of frustrated with the antenna was kind of frustrated with what was going on with the tuning uh wasn't i wasn't getting the results that i expected so I moved the antenna. I was in a public park, and this park has got uh, lots of underground features, uh, lots of concrete. So I have a feeling that the metal that is down the concrete and maybe the sprinkler system might have something to do with it. So I moved the antenna and I did a, a, another scan of 40. And if you look at 40, uh, at this look at 40, so for generals, it starts at 7.175, goes all the way up to 7.300. So at 7.175 on this one, we're probably going to be somewhere around 1.2, maybe, maybe 1. Uh, maybe 1.15 if you want to split the hairs. But at 7.236, which is in the middle of the band, we're 1.1 to 1. So that made a significant difference, and that carries all the way out through the edge of the band. At 7.3, it, it's still below 1.3 to 1. So one key takeaway from this would be if you're ever out in the field and your antenna seems to not be performing the way you think it should be or the way you've tuned it to, move the antenna because there's probably something around there that's causing that antenna not to function correctly, maybe interfering with it. You know, just try moving a few things around. I'll be interested to see what the radio thinks of this antenna once we get it out in the field. We're gonna do a Parks on the Air activation in part three of this video, but I'm curious to see what the radio thinks. I, I have a sneaky feeling the radio is gonna be completely fine with this across the band, uh, all bands with no tuner, but let's, let's uh, we'll cross our fingers for that. But, um, Anyway, there you have it, my friends. Thank you so much for joining me. Uh, if you like content like this, hit the subscription button and don't forget the notification bell so you don't miss the next video. I really appreciate it. Uh, I'm, I'm considering what to do for the next video, the next antenna build. So if you have any ideas or if there's something that you'd like to see built on the channel, drop a comment down in the uh, comment section below the, uh, the video here and we will see you on the next one. Thanks for being with me. Thanks for sticking through both of these videos. 73, have a good day.